Hi, this is Leah, and I want to talk about a great way to make your PDFs work digitally in Google Drive with DocHub. First, we're going to get DocHub. We're going to go to the Google search engine and type in DocHub Chrome. When it comes up, which my computer's taking its sweet time, but when it comes up, you are going to select DocHub in the Chrome store. Let's see. And once that comes up, you're going to have the option to get .hub. You'll have the option to add it to Chrome. I've already got it, so I don't have that button, but it's going to be in the upper right-hand corner. So you're going to add it to Chrome. Next, we're going to go on over to my drive, and from my drive, I'm going to pick one of my PDFs to open. Now, if you guys work with PDFs in Google Drive, you know that there's no way to edit it in Drive. Here, I can open it with .hub since I've gotten it. Um, from your students' Chromebooks, they're going to have to open it in a new tab before they're going to be given the option to open it in .cub. But right here, I'm going to go ahead and open it in .cub. And that's going to load. And I picked one of my color fill film guides, which are film guides that you can color. And they're basically doodle notes for films. And I wanted to use this because I wanted to show that you can type, you can draw, you can color with .cub. So right here is the toolbar, and there's lots of different options that you have. Uh, you can add a text box, and I'm going to do that right here. So if I want to type my responses, I can do that in the text box. Also, if you've already added text boxes in Adobe Pro, then you can type in .cub in the text boxes that are already added. I could also write the answer. So up in the toolbar, uh, right here at the top, I can just click the cursor to go back to cursor. Uh, there is the drawing tool, the pen, and that's what we're about to use right here. So I can change the color, and there's lots of different color options here. I can change the width of the, of the pen so that I can make it as thick or as thin as I'd like. Uh, but right now I'm going to select a color that I want to use, and I'm going to start coloring. And let's go with kind of a light green. So here we have it, and eight is a nice thickness for this, a nice width. So I'm very slowly coloring because I'm not great at this with the mouse. We've got touchscreen Chromebooks at school, and the stylus is phenomenal for doing this. You can do it just like you would a pen to paper, and you're doing it straight on the screen. Well, let me get rid of that. All right, so I'm just coloring the edges exactly like I would if I were doing it on, on paper with colored pencils or with crayons or with markers. And now I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit here. This is strangely addictive, coloring it with the mouse, even though I prefer a stylus and touch screen. Uh, it gets easier as you go with the mouse. Um, Oh, and by the way, that, that little background noise you're hearing, I apologize for that. That's my cat. Our house is a construction zone because it flooded, and she's not happy. There's not a whole lot I can do to keep her quiet. Um, but here, I'll finish coloring these letters, and then I'll jump ahead so that you can see the finished product. But I want to point out that up in the toolbar, there's a highlighting feature so imagine what you could do with, say, close readings. If you put a reading uh, PDF up in here, you could have students highlight and annotate. So this is a really great tool. Get the E. Yeah, this is easier and easier as I go with the mouse. And I'll just finish up this title for you right here. But imagine not having to make a whole bunch of copies of this, just, you know, putting on the movie and saying, make it look pretty, color it um, to help students focus and answer the questions as you go. Uh, really nice. It's, it's pure substitution. Um, you're substituting paper for digital, but it, you know, it's, it's very useful and it's green. You save paper. You save time. It's a win-win. So actually, there are a couple more things about the coloring that I do want to show you. For instance, um, the boxes, I would typically outline them in marker and then color them in with a crayon or colored pencil.
But on this, I really prefer, and I've noticed students prefer too, to just, just kind of outline the text boxes um, on doodle notes or color fill foam guides. Um, I also, let's see, let's just finish this one box. And then I want to show you the hands uh, because I want to show you how I'm going to get the skin tone because you don't have a ton of color selections. Uh, but then again, you really do because um, here I'm just going to use blue. I'm just going to go with one of the standard colors that they have. And I'm going to outline these boxes in blue. But when I get to the, the hands, in order to get a more skin tone, I'm going to have to go into the, the color grid itself. And you'll see how that works. And if I make a mistake, I can delete it. And I'm sure I'll make a mistake with the hands. So let me just finish outlining these boxes while I've got it on blue. And then we'll go um, to, to the hands. All right. And then just one more box after this one. And my cat has quieted down. She seems happy. This is a good thing. All right. And part of the delay here is just my computer's running a little slow. Um, generally, you can see the color come up right when it happens. All right, so now for a skin tone. I'm going to go with this red, and then I'm going to go with something that's more akin to, to brown on the color grid. And I'm just going to start drawing the outline of the hand. And again, I really prefer to do outlines on the digital PDFs to shading things in. And it, and it has the same effect for concentration. If you know anything about doodle notes and whatnot, uh, a big plus of it is that it really does help students to focus and they retain more information. There's that delay I was talking about. Oh, that looks like something that I might want to get rid of because the line got messed up. So I'm going to come up here to the whiteout feature and then just click on that and click X. And the last thing I did is going to go away. And so now I'm going to go right back to the pen feature and draw. And that looks a little bit better. My hand's still a little shaky. But there you have it with the hands. And now I want to jump ahead to show you exactly what it looks like when I finished. I'm uh, not going to do all these letters, but I did do a whole lot of outlining and coloring and shading, and I wrote an answer in. You'll see. Now I'm going to go back to the cursor. So how will your students share this with you? Go up to the three pancakes or the hamburgers, whatever you like to call it in the upper right hand. Download and export is what they're going to select. So from download and export, they can choose. They can um, save it to the computer, their Google Drive. They can Gmail, email it to you, um, save it to Google Classroom, Dropbox, OneDrive. Okay, down here is just straight up downloading it to the computer. Lots of options for sharing it with you. Uh, download the PDF cheat sheet for more information on that. And... Thank you so much for taking the time to learn how to use DocCub. Please visit me at leahcleary.com and toolsforteachingteens.com. Have a great day.